Hello and welcome to episode one, season one of the Kennel official NRL podcast. So for those who don't know, the Kennel is the largest rugby league supporter forum online and the oldest standing, having started in 2004. We have over a million posts, 100,000 discussions, close to 20,000 active members. And we thought in 2023 that it was the right time to start a podcast for the fans, by the fans. Now, just like the Bulldogs team, we're still very much under construction and give us about 10 rounds for our combinations to click, but I guarantee you we'll be building up to something special. We have some wonderful things planned. We have some wonderful guests lined up and the discussions that we're going to have will be influenced by you. So please follow the, the podcast on all the social media. We'll have them linked down in the description below to keep up with our releases and to interact with us. Now, over the last five years, the Bulldogs have had what I would say a massive roller coaster ride of highs, probably not, but lows. So when we say lows, we've had wooden spoons, we've, you know, we were beaten quite handily by Manly 66 to 6 or something like that. Um, you know, we've lost a lot of players, we've had, you know, only 12 or 15 wins in three years. And that's not what the Bulldogs are known for. That's what not that's not what the Bulldogs have ever been about. We're the family club. And what I see happening for the Bulldogs over the last 12 to 18 months is absolutely astounding. The way Phil Gould, uh, the management team, the CEO, Aaron Warburton, and more recently uh, uh, Cameron Seraldo have done for the team is spectacular. When you look at when we first signed Viliami Kikau, initially I thought that's not what we needed. We didn't need another second rower. We needed a halfback. We needed a fullback. But one thing I didn't really understand, the one thing I see now is that all these positive signings, obviously can't forget Reed Marnie, has done is built momentum. And if you look at what the players are saying, if you look at someone like Josh Araka, who signed when Trent Barrett was still here, before we had this momentum going, what he's been saying recently in the media is that this feels like a club that's going to see success. He says, I've seen success, I've been a part of success, and the Bulldogs feel like it's going to be successful. This is all about the momentum. And if you look at all the great things that have been achieved, you know, there's the center of excellence being built after a $40 million grant uh, at Belmore. We've got, you know, with Viliami Kikau, we've got Reed Marnie, we've got Hayes Perrin, we've got Ryan Sutton and, and others that have come to join and add that starch and that uh, talent to our team. Uh, I think that there are going to be some great things happening for the Bulldogs this year and ahead. And then in 2024, we've got Stephen Crichton coming, which in an, in its own right is, is a great signing and will build momentum. Now, one thing that I think uh, as, as, a, as a Bulldogs uh, uh, podcast that we have to discuss is Cameron Seraldo, the coach, the new coach. You know, some journalists have been saying, you know, can he do the job without Phil Gould uh, interfering? Can he achieve success? What can he do for the club? And to be honest, a big part of the momentum that that is at the club right now is because of Cameron Seraldo. Sure, Phil Good's done a lot of work in the background, but I don't think we should discredit Cameron Seraldo. It's been amazing how he's been able to come in and really make a mark on the whole club. So, you know, when he first signed for the Bulldogs, he came the, the day after the Penrith Panthers, his ex-team, won the grand final. He was there in a Bulldogs jersey, willing to start working. And you know this person's going to make some change when his actions are different to those that came before him. When Trent Barrett came over, sure, he signed some team, he signed some players from other teams, but it was more of the same. We had been trying to sign players and, and have some success um, for a long time, and we did nothing. But when Cameron Serraldo in, uh, came in, he said, no, let's take a step back and, and try and rebuild the DNA of the Bulldogs, which is... Um, you know, bringing back those who have been successful at the club. You know, he kept Mick Potter on as an assistant coach. He brought in uh, Andrew Ryan. He brought in the Ogre, Mark O'Milly. He brought in Willie Mason. Um, you know, he gave Josh Reynolds a train and trial uh, opportunity. Uh, you know, brought in Roy Stasi as a trainer. Um, he even went so far as more recently, <coughs> excuse me, to welcome back Sonny Bill Williams. Now, if... You know, as Bulldog supporters, you all know how big this is for our club. Sure, um, when he left, it wasn't on the best of terms, but there's been a lot of water under the bridge. And I think someone like Sonny, with his profile, with his knowledge, and with his uh, influence as a human being, I think this is very, very positive for the Canterbury Bulldogs. Now, I'm not going to say we're going to win the, the, the competition in 2023, but I will say that 
in judging the Bulldogs for 2023, I keep two teams in mind that I think the Bulldogs can, to some degree, emulate. Now, you look at what the Sharks and the Cowboys did last year. You know, in 2021, they weren't that successful. You know, come 2022, um, you know, they finished in the top four and were, you know, almost uh, going to make a grand final. So do I think we can get that far? Probably not. I think we're still one or two players off. But I do think that we're going to surprise a lot of people. Now, <coughs> what I want to do is I want to introduce my co-host. So uh, my co-host is Dibbo. Um, he's a mad rugby league fan. Uh, you, you might be a little bit disappointed to know he's not actually a Bulldog supporter, uh, but I'll, give, I'll hand over to him to tell us who he supports. Follow the mighty St. George. Um, <laughs> down from grandfather to father to son, so it's in the family. Um, club's got a lot of history and tradition, also live locally there, so this might be a long season for St. George. We'll wait and see. Um, but the focus at the moment is Canterbury and the upcoming round. Uh, I feel Philgo is a godsend for the Canterbury club. Uh, he's identified where the club is lacking. Um, the dog, of, the dogs of war DNA, practically had been eroded. And if you see, they've recruited pro quite heavily in the forwards. They've got a beefy forward pack. Despite some early season setbacks, um, they've had uh, a couple of injuries in the forwards. They've still got a well stacked forward pack. They are lacking a bit, I think, in maybe the key position of fullback and possibly the halfback position. It just depends on how good Kyle Flanning goes. I do wish him all the best. Um, he's a quite capable player, probably needs to take on the line more. I mean, if uh, those two positions can fire for him, I mean, why not? They can make the top eight. They won't finish down the bottom. Um, that'll, after, be, after, that'll be the St. George Dragons. I still think Canterbury uh, will finish probably around mid-table this season. Um, look, I'm not saying they won't make the top eight. It just depends on those the spine, how good, the, how well the spine goes because the forward pack will perform. They're a big, beefy forward pack. Um, I think they don't make that this year. They'll definitely make it next year. How do you think Flanagan's going to go? <sighs> Hard to say. He doesn't really take on the line much. He's got a big forward pack. He should be taking on the line with him as well. They'll, they'll be giving him a lot of space and time. Do you think it, him having Reed Marnie now at nine would give him even more time? Yeah, Reed Marnie is a very smart, shrewd player. Um, he's going to give him more time. Look, Jeremy Marshall King last year had a great second half of yeah, the season. Yeah, he had a great season. Yeah, uh, true, true. Potter did a really good job with Canterbury. They almost uh, came into the top eight calculations before they fizzled out towards the end. But at one stage, I was looking certainties for back-to-back -back spoons. So Marshall picked up his game. Uh, you know what? Uh, He's Flanagan a great did, for the Dolphins. I think he is. Yeah, Flanagan did see some improvement. So I wish I wish him all the best. I hope Flanagan does have a good season. I mean, Flanagan's one of those ones. I think he re it's really his last chance in the NRL. I think if he doesn't perform with, you know, with the new coach and be being given that confidence, um, I do think that Flanagan will struggle to attract NRL clubs if he sort of fails again this year. Do you think? Oh, I think he just needs to. He he still he'll get a gig at another club if he doesn't can cut with Canterbury. I think he's just still quite young too. Yeah, he is. He just quite needs young. to. I think he he needs to beef up a little more. But look at Sam Walker at the Roosters. Um, again, uh, he needs to beef up a bit more as well. It's same, I mean, you got to evolve your game as well. So yeah, I, I know, but. Uh, I mean, look, I'm, I'm wishing Kyle Flanagan all the best. I do think he does have that potential. I mean, if you look at with the Roosters when uh, and, uh, in 2021 after Cooper Cronk retired, you know, Flanagan took the Roosters to fourth. Obviously, it wasn't, you know, him alone, but he still had a great season. So, uh, look, I do think he has the potential. Um, I think last year was horrible for him. Uh, will, will he take us to the top eight? I think it does depend on the combinations a don't, lot. Don't be surprised if he does because he's been there before. Um, he did draw at Cronulla. He's done. He was extra, he was one of the more brilliant players in the twenties and in the reserves when he was coming up through the age. Um, he's got it within him. So yeah, just and he's got, got his dad as well. I mean, to, to like you know to pick his brain on ways to improve. So yeah. not only is he being coached by Cameron, but when he goes back home, I'm sure his dad Shane's uh, probably telling him do this, and you know you can improve here and improve the, there. The fans got to back him. He'll do a lot for his confidence. Actually, that, that's a great point. I, and look, I, I'm backing him, and you know I hope all, all you guys out there back him for this year. And I think the um the the other thing is that Cameron Seraldo has to pick and stick 
Carl Flanagan. I don't think you can say after four or five rounds, if he's not doing that crash hot, to get rid of him. I think you just need to pick and stick, and that's something that Trent Barrett, I think, struggled with last year. Look, Barrett, um, <laughs> I think he panned it up to the media, was more concerned about showing his emotions to the media. The thing I like about Seraldo, um, I hear very positive things about him um, through players and whatnot. Um, doesn't give away much to the media. Yeah. He goes about about his work quietly. He's got a better team than what Barrett had last year. So I know, mean it's it's definitely a he, better team, but I think there's also, as we were saying before, I think there's a lot more momentum coming into this yeah. year with Viliami Kikau, with Reed Marnie, but then also like obviously you've got things like having Mick Potter there as an assistant coach. Um, you know, Tabanga, you know, Tavita Pango Jr.'s come out after his boxing match and sort of given himself public accountability. Yeah, I think those things are very positive. What Phil Gould's done is he's made Canterbury the club once again that the players want to go to, the club. So he's built up the forward pack. If um, things don't work out, say, with your half or your fullback, for example, yeah, there's plenty of halves that will come on the market That's and true. fullback that will say, I want to play with that forward pack under that coach, uh, that club that makes things happen. So, and I, I mean, mean look, we've seen that already. I mean, Carl Oluapu, he left left the Broncos obviously unceremoniously, and you know he came to the Bulldogs. I mean, I'm sure the Bulldogs I thought they paid a bit over the top there. Well, I mean, it's all media speculation. I, I think Phil Gould is a little bit more shrewd than paying what the media is speculating. To be honest, I mean, Carl, you know, gave him a top thirty spot as well when it was a uh, I thought more qualified players were waiting in the reserves. Uh, look, you got um, you had your young halfback. Carly Rajab? Yep. Yeah, he performed excellent. I don't know why he's missed out. Um, I mean, Reynolds, I still don't understand that exciting. I mean, I don't think the players need an old head. I looked he had honest. really nothing to offer in the Super League either. So I think he's a finished product now. Uh, he was a good player in his days, Reynolds. But Man, you're going to have some pitchforks coming after you with that comment. <laughs> I'm just saying it straight as he, as is. A lot of their fans couldn't understand it either. I, I mean, they said, ah, oh, favourite son of the club. No. I don't think so. Uh, look, I disagree. I, I think being a Bulldog supporter, <clears throat> I think, look, I'm happy for Reynolds being there. Look, I want Khaled Rajab in the top 30. I think Khaled Rajab has a lot of potential to be the next uh, seven. But then you think, okay, so we've got Carl Oluapu. He's not going to play six because Burden's there. We've got Khaled Rajab. Are they building depth? He's What's very, the situation? He's a very qu- confident kid, uh, but probably too confident. At, how old is he, 17? Who, Carl? Carl I think he, I think he just turned eighteen or nineteen, so he's still quite 17, young. 17, 18, extremely overconfident. So he's playing against men. He's not playing against kids anymore. Look, I agree, but I but I also think that those players that we've seen come to rugby league at such a young age, play the game, and have that confidence, have also been the ones that have been that have stood out and have have actually become great. I think you have to have a certain amount of confidence in yourself, and so I, I don't think the confidence is necessarily a bad thing. Did he handle the Broncos thing the right way? Maybe in 10, 15 years he'll turn around and say he may not have. Sounds but right, if yeah. if you know if 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 what um is being what he said is true, you, you can't you gotta sort of hand it to the guy. Like he did feel like he was being mistreated. He was promised to meet with Kevin Walters, top 30 spot. Things didn't pan out like they were promised. You know what I'll say now, good on him. He gotta he gotta deal a lot of players, a lot of past and present or future even players wish they can get. Look, it's so true, but I also think that there, there will be pressure on him and he has to perform. And by all Correct, accounts, yeah. he's training well. Um, and <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sure Seraldo would not have made the decision lightly. I think Seraldo is very, very, very smart individual and he's a very smart operator. Like a lot, a lot of people were talking about the hayes um, uh, uh choice at, at fullback. Um we have to wait and see on that one. He, I mean, I mean let's leave get, it to the coach. I mean, let's get he into it, He knows what right? he's doing, yeah? Yeah, let's get into it. Well, so, I, I, I mean, he knows what he's doing. I'd like to see probably Jacob Kuraz end up there. I, I at know, fullback? Yeah, he did well at the World Cup. He was playing um, with um, the Lebanese team who had a lot of um, semi-professionals in that team. Half the team, I think, was professional. And To be honest, and I think he, he, re- can, he really shined. I think you can throw Kuraz forward and he'll do well. That guy, he's just Committed. an athlete. He's just... And he loves the he loves the club. He's got the energy. Honestly, I think the biggest injection of energy that made a big difference to the team last year, while it wasn't single handed, was when Jacob Kiraz 
came into the team. I think that was the turning point. Just a lot of energy, a lot of confidence. Again, we talk about confidence, a lot of youth, and he wanted to be there. He wanted to earn his spot. And you you look at, you know, someone like Josh Arakal, which actually I want to mention just quickly. You know, a lot of people say, you know, the biggest signing for the Bulldogs was Burden and or, you know, Gould. And, and look, there were great signings. I think Gould has done a great job and Burden is, you know, he speaks for himself. But I actually think one of the best signings that the Bulldogs made was buying Josh Arakal. I think Josh Adokar is one of those players that is more than the sum of his parts. Like, he's more than just a footy player. He's the he, fastest man in the game. He's the fastest man in the world. Oh, I see that. Phil Gould says. <laughs> but, but I just think he brings an energy and he brings, like, an infectious um, uh, uh, positivity, right? You look at... Um, you know, just his slogan, let's trot, his his speed, he's, he's always laughing, he's got that infectious laugh. And I think that makes a big difference, even if you look at the World the he's, World Cup team. He's engaged the fans as he's well. He's definitely engaged the fans. The players that love him, um, you know, it's, it's no um, it's he's no good wonder. from a corporate sense he's as well. very good in, in every aspect. But then I think what he brings to the team is, you try, know. Try-scoring machine. <laughs> he's a try-scoring machine. Um, For a club of the Bulldogs, he had, what, 16 or 17 tries last year. He knows what success is. He does know what success is, and I think that combination with Burden was incredible. And I think the combination he will build this year with, you know, Marnie Burden, uh, Kikau, um, and, uh, uh, and and uh, uh, Fox. I think that's going to be a combination that I'm very excited to see as the doggies. They can stay play. healthy. They'll give the. They can crack the eight. I, I honestly think the Bulldogs, if they stay healthy, will make the eight. And if you look at, and I'll tell you why. I just want to make this. Uh, obviously, I'm a Bulldog supporter, so I'm biased. I've got blue and white goggles on. but I got him 10th <coughs> for the record, 10th. He's got him 10th, but he's a Dragon supporter. They're going to come last. It doesn't matter. Um, but, but the Bulldogs, I think, um, if you look at us stringing a few wins together last year, people start saying, could they make the eight? And we had a horrible first 10 rounds. I think we only won one or two games. Now, you you inject some momentum. You inject some more experience. You inject, you know, the 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 flair and, and the aggression of someone like Kikau and the workout of dummy half of someone like uh, uh, Reid Mani. Then you've got the the, the, the increased in experience of Burden having been in origin, having gone to the World Cup and won. I just think that there's so much there and Seraldo has a plan. If you look at the team that he's chosen even, it shows that this guy doesn't just want to throw people in there for the sake of it. He's gone to build a team. He's trying to build the future. So you look at, for example, him choosing Jason, uh, Jaden Tanner, Frank Mpale, and Jacob Preston on the bench. That would look like a weak bench to anyone, right? But I don't think so. Jacob Preston absolutely killed it, and one of our best in the trials. They're, they're well stacked in the forwards. My issue with the Bulldogs <coughs> is the back line. If they get injuries to a few key players, that's where they may miss out on the eight. That's why I've got them 10th. They're not, they don't have depth or extensive depth in the back line. In their forwards, they're well stacked. Look, I think the back line is definitely one we still have to continue to build on. We're getting Stephen Crichton in 2024. But then, yeah, you know, we good. had we had Braden Burns, um, who, who hasn't been chosen, who I think played out of his skin in the trials. He'll go well. Yeah, and I, and I think, look, he'll, he'll be there, thereabouts. Um, Jaden Ockenbohr, look, we all <laughs> we all have our, our history with Jaden. All, we all know what he can do, but I, I do want to give him a chance under Seraldo. I do think... That he can do something, maybe, maybe, maybe not as a, a, in a back line, maybe even in the second row. I do think he could do something there, but yeah, look, if we're talking about back line, um, there is a little bit of depth there. I mean, we still have Declan Casey. I think he performed very well last year. Very good. Um, so you know, it, it is it is a club that's on the up couple. It still is a bit of a rebuild, but um, overall, um, I'm very very excited about the year. I'm very very excited to be. Uh, engaging with you guys throughout the year, um, talking about the Bulldogs. Uh, you know, rugby league is the greatest game in the world. I do follow a lot of other sports, but nothing gets me going quite like rugby league does. Now, Tevita um, Pangai. Oh, Tevita Pangai. I think he has a big year. Look, Tevita Pangai is one of those players. Unfortunately, he's been a little bit hot and cold yep. for us. I do think he's been judged a little bit harshly. I think he was very good for us last year. You know, led the offloads by absolute fate. Fant you know, fantastic player, very creative. He's excellent all over the park. When he gets it right, he is unstoppable. He's absolutely unstoppable. Creative, very creative. Very, very, very creative. Um, so talking about teams, I think, you know, we, we can probably jump straight in. Yeah. Um, so essentially the way we're going to try and format our podcast is we'll have a bit of a bit of a spiel about some big talking points and then we'll just go through the through the teams announced for that coming week and then how we think the match is going to go. But this week we're going to start with the Bulldogs and the Seagulls, even though they're not the first game, but we'll start with the Bulldogs and the Seagulls. Um, 
War Dogs and Seagulls. Right. So yeah, we can go then. We'll start with the doggies first. So we've got uh, Perham, Perham at fullback, Kiraz, Avarillo, Alamadi, Araka in the wings and the centers. Then we've got Burden, Flanagan uh, at six and seven, Max King at, uh, at prop, Marnie at nine, Sudden at prop, which I think is is a great choice, and I think he did very very well in the trials Consistent, for us. Consistent, very good. Kick out, Fatala Mariner, Fa'amanu Brown, uh, Jaden Tanner, Corey Waddell, Franklin Pele, and Jacob Preston. <coughs> I think the one thing that stands out for me there is obviously people saying Hayes Perrin might not be up to it at fullback or, you know, didn't have great trials, but they are trials and they're there for a reason. They're there to see where the deficiencies may be. I'm excited to see what he can do and I'm excited to see uh, Seraldo's vision with Perrin at fullback. Um, what do you think about Perrin at fullback? Um... I got to say how he goes under the high ball and he's uh, yeah. at his work rate basically. He dropped a couple in the trials. He did drop a couple for a couple of high balls. Um but we were versus Dif the Sharks. different time now. Now it's the season. Don't now yeah, now it's a season proper. It's time to get serious. Um look again, I, I, one thing I think that Bulldogs fans have struggled to do over the last few years with so many changes in coaches is trust the the, the coach. Yep. I'm trusting the coach. I'm trusting Seraldo. I there's been a lot of raps on him. You see what he's done at Penrith. You see everyone that talks about Seraldo says he's an excellent coach. I have faith in him. I think that this back line is going to do it for us. I think they're going to be excellent. and they're You're going to, going to back the team. I'm going to back the coach good. and the team. Very good. I think I'm going to back the team. One other thing that stands out for me, I think, is Fa'amanu Brown at 13. This one came out of nowhere. I did not expect Fa'amanu Brown to be at 13. Look, uh, he was a very capable player um, before COVID Then. COVID probably worked in his favour. Everyone thought he had retired. Yeah. And he had some bad injuries, leg injuries. That's so right, yeah. So two years out, 2020 and 2021. Well, he was with the Bulldogs. Correct. Um, worked in his favour really well. So his legs managed to get back on the mend. Uh, West Tigers gave him a run. He did and very well. he did extremely well in those last couple well. of months. Yeah, he did very Deserved well. the contract, um, either at the Tigers or somewhere else. Canterbury picked him up and... The good thing about uh, for Amanu Brown is he can either come off the bench, start at lock, start at hooker, can slot in in the back line somewhere. He's so, very capable. Why, uh, why for Amanu Brown at thirteen though? Why not say on the bench and maybe choose to start a Jacob Preston and put Fatala Mariner at thirteen? I think he'll uh, start off. He can um, probably weather the storm at the start, like the big boppers that come from Manly. This round, but he, he's not. He's not. I don't he's know. A creative, if he's, he's, ver, he's very creative. Yeah, but he's not as well. known for his defense, and in the first three minutes, you need defense. Well, they're probably looking at more creativity in the forward pack just for the first 10, 15 minutes, twenty minutes, and then get your forwards such as Franklin play and Preston on. You think they can start rolling from there? You, you don't think he'll play eighty minutes? No, definitely not. No, not eighty minutes. No, he might even get half hour, or forty minutes. Um, Do you reckon he's there to help? Flagan? He may, he may even if Marnie comes off, he may even rotate with Marnie as yeah. well. Him and Marnie might may, may rotate afterwards the hooking position where he probably gives Marnie a ten minute or fifteen minute really? break. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they got a strategy. Um, see how it works out for him. Yeah, on game day. it's very interesting. Um, do, do you think he could be there to take some pressure off Carl Flanagan? Who um, Ma for Marnie yeah. Brown? No, he's not there to take pressure off um, Flanagan. He's there to rotate with the forwards. You think so? You don't think he's there to be an extra point of attack if, say, Flanagan's... Ma sort of... Ma Reed Marnie will be taking pressure off um, Flanagan. Yeah. Um, he'll be the one. He'll be controlling the ruck speed. So <coughs> he'll give you forwards more time. That will also help um, Flanagan and Burden and the outside yeah. backs. Yeah. What do you think? How do you think Burden's going to go this year? And Burden will always play good. Yeah. Um, regardless, <laughs> I mean, in State of Origin, you saw he was just scoring he's a tries. Freak. He's a freak. You know, he's, he's, he's a, a freak. He, he makes it happen. He, he's a freak. Just there at the right place at the right time. He's got that X factor, the uh, it factor. Just, just when when you when you um, read all the reports about him re-signing with the Bulldogs, he said he didn't even consider anyone else. Once you know, once he saw Soraldo and what was happening, he said, "I didn't even consider anyone else." This was the. I just said, "Let's get let's get it done after the World Cup." I mean, as a Bulldogs fan, as you were saying before, it makes players want to be there. The I think the club's got a plan to build at the moment around Burden. So, burden and money, I think. Uh, I think just solely Burden at the moment. Um, he will be the player they build around. So he saw that. Um, he saw the opportunity as a leader. So mm. he was sold on that, basically. I mean, he's, he's uh, he brings a smile to face, bro. He's a very he's very versatile. So I mean, let's say oh, he's he, excellent. Let's say he didn't have a quite a good season or good game at five eight. He may he get shifted in the centres and he do well. Yeah, look, 
uh, it's just one of those things, man. Um, he he just you want the ball in his hand, and I think you know whether he's passing or he's kicking or he's, he's just like his bombs. All I, all I look forward to every Bulldogs game is he, I just want to see Burnham get the ball and kick it. He reminds just me. Kick it. He reminds me of probably not on the same. I don't know at the moment on the same talent length, Laurie Daly, who could alternate oh, between the centers and the five. Yes, five absolutely. Eight. Daly was a fantastic player he's excellent. in his youth. Yeah, Very yeah. good. I mean, even even Fitler to an extent, I think he, he does remind me a little bit of Fitler. Just a, a bit taller. He's, he's sort of a, a bit of a country boy. Like I think Fitler was more of a bullocking ball runner. Oh, actually, yeah, Fitler, Fitler was a, was a very bullocking ball runner. So that's why he slotted into lock afterwards. Oh yeah, fair he enough. was a big five eight. But he was a great five eight as well. Yeah, he, he was, had it. All. He was good at any yeah, position. Yeah, he, he was. And I think you're right. Burden does come across. Burden like had that, a, yeah. Fitler had a big boot like Burden. So, had so did Daly. Daly had a big. Not boot. as big as Burden though. Definitely not. I, I don't remember. I think the last the one player. That had the big boot as big as Burden was um the the winger from the Tigers um Pat Richards Pat Richards I remember a player called John Simon he played for Illawarra Steelers I think the Roosters oh here well. we go bringing up the Steelers come on man no no, no John <laughs> Simon was, John Simon was our original player he had a massive boot yeah massive oh that's well, good it's huge a, boot yeah you keep the Dragons history to yourself no nah, I didn't follow the Steelers <laughs> back then St Georgian Steelers were a separate entity so um what Just, do you think of the bench um. Yeah, you know what? Look, he's gone a bit of uh, – he's gone the forward route. Yeah. So I like that. I mean, I didn't expect Pelé to be there in the 17. Did you see him play in the trials? Nothing special. What? I didn't, I didn't think – I didn't think he'd get Nah, I you're get dreaming. Much you are dreaming. Pelé was incredible. Pelé is literally a mountain. He is – he. he if he wasn't the first one chosen in the 17, I would have been upset. I uh, thought he – I didn't think he got enough game time. That's why I wanted to see more. But I think you don't need him to have – to play 60 minutes. But you know what? Good. He's on the bench. I expected Preston. He's excellent. I expected Preston to be there. Yeah. Did you uh, expect Tanner to be there or Andrew Davey? No, I expected Davey. Yeah, I expected Davey as well. But Davey and Waddell are similar. They they give you, if you put them on 80 minutes or 60 minutes or 50 minutes, yeah. they'll give you non-stop. Look, the only thing with Waddell is I think he's got a he's got an error in him. That's the problem I have with Waddell. Look, if you put Waddell, if he involves himself in the game and doesn't stay out cold or quiet, he'll give you Look, I agree. a big return. I think, I, think, I think he'll play a lot of minutes. I think he'll come in and... Even if he does his 30 or 40-minute stint, he'll give you a good return. Yeah, look... Just look, got to keep him interested in the game. <coughs> look, I'm back in the coach. I think the coach knows what he's doing. If he didn't deserve to be there, I don't think he would have chosen him. What do you think of Manly? Um, so, you know, Tom Turbo's back. I love Tom Turbo, even though I hate Manly. Um, sorry, Manly supporters. I, I all right, Manly, Manly hates everyone as well, so it's all right. <laughs> um, uh, look, I think Tom is, you know, him being there, you know, to Pilotu, Parker, Kula, Garrick, and I think Cooper Cooper Johns um, being at, at six is, is a good choice. I think Weeks is good. You know, he's the future. But I do think Cooper, Cooper Johns was probably one of the best players in the trials. Um, they've got a good forward pack. Um, you know, I, I'm surprised that Sipley isn't there. Surprised they've left Sipley out. Um, First round, so he'll eventually come into calculations. You reckon? Hands down. He's yeah. a good player. It's probably he's it's very, probably a blessing good. for him that he didn't, he's not there in the first round. You Everyone else so? will get their run first. Then yeah, get found out. I think Sipley will find him. I, find I think himself they've got, in a, the coach, they've got a buy round too. So maybe maybe he's got a niggling yeah, injury. Yeah, might have a few. It might be a month before he gets yeah. his run. It's interesting. It's also interesting to see a Morgan Harper's on the uh, in the reserves, not chosen. We we're actually talking before we started about Morgan Harper's defense. Yeah. Um, I also think that you know with Tua Pilotu and Kula there, I think Saab might struggle to get back in the team. I I expect maybe Garrick will go in the centres in place of Brad Parker. <laughs> you reckon, I think Parker's been very Saab, solid. Saab is uh, he's an attacking weapon. Yeah, he finishes got, well. But um, he's, he's got defensive liabilities. I, I think that's look, his problem. His pace can make up for it if him. You know, we've seen that quite a bit where his pace would make up for it. So but I just think I think it'll be a bit. I think it'll be more experienced this year. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I, look, I'm happy to give Saab a chance. I think. Look, I think his speed is incredible. I love watching him. You know, ma you know, just streak down the sideline. Just notice that K Weeks is on the bench, which I think is a Good great player. move. Good player. He's a great player, and he's on the bench. I think. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's it's a smart team by Anthony Seibold. Look, I wish him all the best. I think the the stuff that happened at Brisbane was obviously not the best. Not 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 great for. Seabold, the Broncos, or Seabold's team. So I do wish him all the best, and I hope um, uh, for his, for our sake, Manly doesn't do well. But I hope he does well as a coach. <laughs> what? Do you, how do you think this game goes? Look, I've gone. Um, I was expecting Canary to spring up a surprise by eight points. I, I know Manly won the preseason uh, challenge. Challenge, but 
I mean, you're showing all your deck of cards in the preseason. It's only a preseason. They yeah. get. I think Manly's getting ahead of themselves. I don't think much of their side at all, to be honest. Wow, really? Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. They're straight away throwing Seabod, giving him the thumbs up uh, too early. I think Canterbury will, will get up by eight points. That's interesting. That's... I'm going to go Canterbury. I know they're missing a few players. Look, I think if if the dogs can maintain the aggression, I think I think we'll win by I would say twelve points. I think okay. we've got it in us. Um, but also it comes down to how Perrin perform, performs at, at fullback. I think that's what it all comes down to. He's going to be that linchpin. pin. If he can be that link between the the halves and the and the backs, Look, I, he'll be well supported by his wingers. He will hundred percent. Ado Carr can play fullback as well. So <laughs> I mean, Avarillo, as you said, uh, yeah, Avarillo. You know, um, Kiraz can play fullback. He, he'll be well supported. He'll be fine. Uh, yeah, I think dogs by twelve, and I think Pele's uh, Pele's going to have a standout standout game. What about Kikau? Oh, Kikau is is one of the best players in the in the competition. He's he's going to be he's going to show us what it, why we bought him and why we paid so much for him. I would have loved first game. I would have loved to see Tavita Pango. When's oh. he? When? How long are we expecting him? Back? Round four. Round four. Yeah, I think they're saying round three or Good. four. Yeah, yeah. And actually, uh, an update on Luke Thompson's injury. If you guys haven't heard. That his injury is not as bad as first initially so suspected. So not six months anymore. No, so they were saying six months, and they're saying Three. six to eight weeks. Best case, six weeks. Oh, fantastic! I've never heard of an ankle injury taking six months. Yeah, I'm not sure that we weren't given too many details, but Phil Gould's come out and said it's not as bad as initially suspected. Oh, so I found he's that what well, they thought it was a syndrome. Yeah, Inshallah, Inshall, it's only six to eight weeks, man. I think I think Thompson has a lot to prove. All right. Um. So, <coughs> game one, Ills first storm. Let's uh, <laughs> let's push through these. Um. So, yeah. Um, how do you think this one goes? I've gone uh, this one. I think I've gone the Storm by eight, because uh, simply because um, uh, the Eels are missing a few players from last year's grand yeah, final. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, I know the Storm are missing a large chunk of their experienced forward pack. They still retained a lot of that, uh, a good amount, uh, a good core of that forward pack. Yeah. Um, they got some um, younguns coming through. Look, Bellamy's the ever professional. He's excellent. He always motivates his players. The players play for him. So I still expect uh, Storm to get up on this one. I've gone with them eight points. I know it's a Parramatta home game. Yeah. I still have Parramatta coming in my top eight this year. I've still got Melbourne in there, but I think Melbourne will prevail on this one. I, I don't know, man. I, I've gone Eels by four. I yeah, think, look, close game. I think the only reason I've gone Eels by four is because, you know, uh, they've set a precedent for themselves where they, yep. where they perform up until about June, July, and then they take a bit of a dip. And, they and then they're back reviving. Up. Yeah. So I think they'll, they'll win by four. Um, look, to be honest, I still think they have a great team. You know, their, their back line's excellent. They've still got their halves. Um, their forwards are still strong. And I think Hodgson isn't as bad. <coughs> he minimizes the, the impact of the, the Reed Money loss. I don't think he's as good as Reed Money anymore. But look, he's a, he's a competitor. He's a competitor for sure. The Englishmen always are. To be he honest, always uh, doesn't doesn't throw the towel in. Doesn't stay. And I, I just think that oh, look, Bell they bought Jack Murchie. They've got Jack yeah. Murchie from Warriors. Bellamy's last season. Um. Oh yeah, Bellamy's last season. Thank Come God, in. Melbourne. We don't have to see Melbourne <laughs> dominating anymore. Uh, look, I think they. I think they're a bit like the Panthers now. They've just got such a great system that they'll always be competitive. Yep. But yeah, I, I'm, it was by four. You're saying Melbourne by eight, ten? Yeah. Uh, no, I, yeah, I went Melbourne by eight. Yeah. Mm. Warriors and Knights. I think these two will be towards the bottom of the table this year. I don't know. I honestly think that. Look, I I think in this game the Warriors will go home, get home by it's early season. It's also home advantage. Yeah. I got the Warriors going home by ten points. Yeah. Um, I do expect Newcastle to improve as the season goes along, mm -hmm. and I also expect them to finish higher than the Warriors on the ladder. No, I don't have the Warriors coming last. So rest easy, Warriors. Yeah, fans. He's got the Dragons coming last. No, I don't. <laughs> um. I actually think the Warriors are going to get up quite handily. Look, uh, I like the Warriors club, but just looking at their lineup, I think they they got, there's a good talent in there, but they just I don't think they're competing with the other sides. Look, I don't think they're competing yet, but I do think that Webster is a good coach. I think what he did at the Tigers when he was there as the interim coach, yep. he did very, very well. And I think they, they missed the trick by not signing him. Uh, they got to go on a heavy recruitment spree. Um, and, and look, to be honest... And they really, really got to invest heavily <laughs> in in their own juniors. They lose a lot of their juniors to Australian clubs. Oh, look, so I, I think that's, do something that's been there. the problem with, with the Warriors for a very long time now. But I do think that, you know, you've add, you add Tamir Martin, you know, Tamir Martin in there. You've got... Tamari Martin, yep. Tamari Martin, um, Charles Nicol Clockstad. You've got um, Aiden Fanua-Blake. You know, Fanua-Blake's... Uh, 
He's a freak. He's a good forward. He just needs he's the other forwards forward. yeah, yeah, to aim up to, with yeah, him. He, needs, he can't look, do it all himself. I think if they, I think if they click, they can do well. I I have the Knights coming last. I oh, do have the Knights coming. I last. I got them thirteenth. I got the Warriors actually coming sixteenth. Nah, I don't think the Warriors will be, be that. I think I like the Warriors club, but I think the Warriors surprise a few see. people. Also, bold 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 prediction. I think that uh, I don't think that Sean Johnson will be number seven towards the end of the year. I think they will drop him. So who do you think will take over? You got Tamari Martin there. Anyone else? Uh, I mean, they've got Volkman. I think Volkman can come in and do some good stuff. You know what? Yeah. Um, it's just the problem I have with Sean Johnson is that he's getting old, and I feel like he can uh, have... he's still got a lot to offer. Look, I think he's got a few years at least. I don't. I, I think. It, I think he's. You think the Achilles. Uh, yeah, I just I takes think, time, eh? He just. I just he don't think he's a number seven. I mean, I, he took him to. He took him to the grand final as a halfback twelve years ago. Yeah, he was young. Yeah, you know, young and they had Ivan Cleary, who was a great coach. So, yeah, Cleary. But, but I think, yeah, I think moving forward, I don't think Sean Johnson will be the number seven toward the end of the year. But that's my bold prediction. But I think, I think Warriors by ten. Yeah, I, yeah, I've gone the same actually. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Warriors by ten. Nice. Panthers Broncos. This is going to oh, be this the is Penny be, Panthers uh, in the Bronx. This is going to be. Um, yeah, Broncos <laughs> got a tough one first up. Yeah, definitely. I think they got some classy players in the lineup. Brisbane, um, whether they're gelling together, they did really fade last year. They had a good first half of the season, or the first, let's say, even two thirds of the yeah. season, and they really faded towards the end. Um, I think when they finished tenth or ninth, I think they ended up finishing. Did St George end up finishing ahead of them? Ah, don't talk about St George. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, yeah. look, look, Selwyn, Selwyn Cobbs at fullback, which I think is a great. Great choice. I, yep. I think he's great. At I think fullback. he's still a winger, though. I think he's. I think he can make the, the move to fullback. I think he's just his temperament. He's good at wing. Let the fullback. Someone else has got to be switched on the whole game. I mean, that's what people said about Latrell. Do you remember? No, I never had that about Latrell. I always not... thought Latrell was a fullback because you remind me a lot about Inglis. Yeah, but but I think I think Selwyn Cobos look remind me a lot of uh, of Latrell. Cobos a powerful runner. Uh, just whether he stays <laughs> interested and involved, that's what I mean by temperament. Oh, yeah, that's why I, I see more on the wing. I, I'm with you though. He does go. And Latrell sometimes he gets disinterested. I mean, he, he, give or take, if you get 15 minutes out of Latrell, yeah, he, you've won the game. I think basically, yeah. yeah so, but I, I think the Broncos have a good team. Um, I don't know if they've yet gotten over. That, that end of last season, I think I think some of that will still. I got them. I got them finishing ninth again. I just see some players. Yeah, I got them finishing in ninth or tenth. I don't actually think lacking have them in the some players in certain positions. I Look, still I still think the nines a problem for them. Whether Corey Pakes or um, Billy Walters can excel there, I don't know. I think they're a good combo, but I don't. Th yeah, they're, they're not Adam, in that. They're not in the upper echelon. Like they're not a Adam a Reynolds or, a, or Adam or Reynolds got to stay. Adam Reynolds got to stay fit. So unless they got a replacement half, they can. I reckon. I reckon Panthers by twelve minimum. I got Panthers plus actually. Yeah, look, I got Panthers by twenty two. They are at home. Um, they are extremely hurting from that World Club yeah, Challenge absolutely. loss. It was at home as well. I mean, they thought they are the best in the world. St Helens came and just yeah. knocked them over and. But I, I do think the Panthers are an Look, excellent team. And they are. They were badly outplayed against St. Helens. They'll, they'll be first. But they're even I, I actually got Panthers finishing first against yeah. again. Matter of fact, I mean, if you look at Penrith from first grade all the way down to their 16s. They won all four competitions last year. so Down to their 16s, they are leaders basically. So, I mean, if they can maintain that for an extended time, I mean, I'm saying for the for the next two decades, they win at least five to ten premierships. Out of it. Really? If you look at if you look at it, clubs historically, they had it going good for an extended period. And down, they've done well for an extended period. Look, I think they can, they're going to build a dynasty like Melbourne did and like the Roosters did yeah, there for a period, right? I think they're going to be at the top of the competition for a long time. But the the thing about Penrith is, if they lose a gun, there's somebody already made yeah. to replace him, and if not on the same level, either better. Or on the same or level, just as good. Or, ju or just slightly behind. If you look at, um, for example, I know I'm going back very far back, but if you look at the great St George teams of the fifties and sixties, oh, no one wants to hear about that. No, Listen. let's talk about. No, 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 no one wants to hear about They it, never hung on for someone look, for too long. Look, they've got Mitch Kenny at nine. Hang on, no one cares about the Dragons. They never, and <laughs> no, Penrith, no one cares about the Dragons. And Penrith are doing the same thing. They're not hanging on they to also, anyone. They also for too went without long. a competition for what, 30, 30, 40 years. Who's this? The, the Dragons. Yeah, but that's because they didn't follow suit. Oh, that man, no worries. Before. Anyway. Anyway. Not look, la nothing lasts forever, but <laughs> two decades Mitch of Kenny sustain. Mitch Kenny at nine, I think he's good in the early periods for the fans. Sonny Luke is a freak. 
And he comes from that uh, conveyor belt of the Stephen Crichton's and the Jerome Lewis. There you go. He's played with them. You lose Kikau, you have ready-made, you know, Crichton goes, somebody else comes in. And look, they bought Luke Garner, who I think was a gun, and the Tigers are stupid. Look, he, he, he'll be a good squad player. I don't see him a, eventually He's not a kick-out. He's not he a won't kicker. be starting eventually. I still he's starting at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I can I can see him not. Uh, I can still see him in the seventeen. Who are they going to start instead of him? They'll have other players that will come through. I think oh. there's uh, stronger I think, players. I think I think Garner will be there. I think Garner will be there. I think Sunny Luke honestly is a freak, and I think that while he may not be up here this year or next year, I think for the future he'll be one of the best. I mean, they'll have someone coming in every. Penrith just got the Panthers production by line going through. Panthers huh? by twenty two. Twenty two. I'm saying 13 plus. I don't know how much, but 13 plus. Look, Brisbane, um, they will. I still expect them to get shellacked first round. Yeah. But they will come good. I got them coming ninth. I mean, if they make the finals good on them, uh, I mean, I, I like to see both Brisbane sides do well. Yeah. Because I want to see a third Brisbane side eventually. And they can do it. You know what? They should move St. George up there. They've got a big following up there. <laughs> but I think uh, the NRL wants them to focus on the oh, South look, Coast. I, I, think the, I think the Dragons have a massive sport. Look, I won't, I won't object because they're still playing Sydney a dozen yeah, times yeah, yeah. anyway, right? Um, Dolphins and Roosters? I think Roosters 13 plus. Uh, the Dolphins and the Roosters. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, on this one, I've got the Roosters by 10. Yeah. Uh, basically because the Dolphins are still a little bit disjointed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look, Wayne's always quietly confident. Yeah. And I don't have the Dolphins coming last. I got them. And I wouldn't be surprised if so they got an experienced forward pack. They have great forward They're pack. lacking probably in the backs. I think they're lacking depth. That's where I think That's where problem. it is. I don't think um, the Dolphins were given a fair shake by the NRL to recruit players. I think they made it – I think circumstances were made it very difficult for I Wayne. Agree. Yeah, I agree. Um. I think, to be honest, the NRL just expected Wayne to go up there and perform miracles, and they didn't really give him all the club the support. Oh, I got him coming 12th, you know, and I, and I wouldn't be surprised if they make the eight. They've got a very, I mean. Oh, look, I think they're too new to make the eight. They've got the Bromwich brothers. they got, uh, <coughs> you know, they got some great They won't forwards. make the eight. I don't think they'll make the eight. But they'll I be wouldn't be there. surprised, I'm saying. I got him coming 12th. Yeah, 12th, um, 12th is. is they got good young halves. they got Qatar and, and Sullivan. They didn't choose, um, they, they didn't choose uh, Anthony Milford. Look, Milford, he, when he's high on confidence, he's a world beater. Yeah, but I thought that he would get first crack to prove what he to show what he can do in this new team. Uh, I think it's a smart move by Wayne showing that you know you got work to do, son. So and look, I, aim I, up. I'm a big fan of Sean O'Sullivan. I think he's he's a good, solid, uh, very talented. leader, yeah. very talented. And if Isaiah Cato can go in there and, and use the flair, I think it can be a good 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 um good combo. I do think that they'll get a lot better towards the end of the season. Yeah, that, you're correct. Yeah. I, I think they only um, ten to fifteen rounds. But they're going to come good. I just don't think they have it yet to make the eight. I'm saying 11, but I could be wrong. Yeah, we're about the yeah. same. What about the Roosters? How do you think? Oh, number? Roosters will be in the top four. I've got Roosters coming third. Um, Trent Robinson's... Great coach. He doesn't muck around. He doesn't muck around. They've um, got Brandon he doesn't Smith sit now. There. He doesn't sit there giving away too much to the media. Yeah. He goes around his work quietly. Backs his players, always. He demands the respect of his players, and they res uh, he respects them. They respect him back. They always recruit well. They do. Um, they got good people at that club. So the players um, are set outside football as well. Uncle Nick. Um, yep, the godfather, um, Nick Politis. Um, very likable. Uncle, ba Uncle Paper Bags. No, paper no, bags. no. They're just a well-run <laughs> club. Look, Nick Politis is a very likable person. Um, I saw him about a decade ago. My uh, close friend who I was had terminal cancer. Yeah. When the dressing rooms um, in a Manly versus Roosters game. Yeah. It was that uh, heart stopper at Sydney Football Stadium. Oh, I yeah. I think he ended up 4-0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sonny came out, took us into the sheds. Uh, the first person to approach us in there was Nick, and he sat with us for the whole when they're probably about 20 minutes, half hour. Amazing. The whole time, Nick, they brought food in. Nick came over, brought food. Um, all the players came around. Yeah, so Nick, uh, yeah, I'm very grateful for that day. So, and the player, everyone, uh, everyone says positive things about him. He's a well liked person. And look, he's run the Roosters Club for fantastically about four decades now. And, and they've been very successful. So, I mean, look, they've got Brandon Smith. He's the only real big buy. And they just no, they got Matt Lodge as well. But he uh, was there last year. Yeah, towards the end, but he'll get a full proper season. Oh, look, the Warrior Hargraves, they're saying he might, I think they're saying he won't be there in 2024. I think Jared's. I know he's at the end of his career, but I think he's just performing almost as good as at his peak. I still think, look, if he stays next year, he's still going to get a good year out of him. Oh, they got a ready-made replacement in Matt Lodge. 
But also, don't forget... They look paying ass is coming on the market, so... It's true, but then uh, Phil Good came out and said, we still have a lot of money in the cap for the Bulldogs. So, so you think you'll get Payne Oh, my, that would be a dream to have Payne Guy and Haas in the same team as well as uh, Kikau and, you know, Sada. Oh, and, oh no, no, don't get me started. Don't get me started, guys. Don't yeah, get me started. I got Roosters there. They're ultimate professionals. Yeah. Look, to be honest, I think... Um, they look, have a they've got Jackson Paulo. I think he's a good buy from the Rabbitohs. I oh. think he'll excel in that back line. Oh, I still think the Roosters, they've been, I think... For almost three decades now, they've been almost in the finals every single year. Yeah. And you trace it back to when they signed Phil Gould from Penrith. That's right. You know, he brought that winning culture with him and a change of fortunes. Then you had Sonny Bill there, and they're still implementing his training methods there, his um, approach to the game, yeah. to training, so or even the one percenters. Look, I agree. That's why I think him coming back to the Bulldogs is such a positive he, for the he club. He revolutionised the game in uh, oh, one as a, sense as a second rower. He revolutionised the, the way you approach it off the field and also on the field. Absolutely. Um, once and then also, yeah, once and he generation. was also a trailblazer for when it came to player contracts. So once he did a lot for for players out there. People don't. I think a lot of people miss that. Um, about how much he Sonny was su- he was influences super, in the he background. He was a superstar to watch. I think once in a generation talent, to be honest. I think yeah. Sonny's... Look, you know what? I'll say that we'll bless you get Sonny in the forwards at once uh, and Greg Inglis in the backs at the same time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then you had also had someone like, uh, you know, you had Cameron Smith at nine. Look, look, they were great, but I'm just saying the two standouts, Sonny Bill, Greg Inglis, just freaks. I, I, still, I also think um, having someone like... Um, Smith at nine, I still think. Oh, uh, he was fantastic. He, he was on another yeah. level. Like, I don't think we'll ever see a nine that dominates the game in every facet like Cameron Smith does. But uh, getting back to this, right? Yeah. They've got Corey Allen and Jackson Polo on board. I think they'll fit in very well. I actually liked Corey Allen at the Bulldogs, and I I, I was hoping that he would get a chance at fullback um, under Seraldo, but obviously it wasn't to be. So they've got Corey Allen, Polo, and Brandon Smith. I yep. think they have a great team. I just want to uh, – my only question mark is – Luke Keery and his concussion issue. I think uh, he's managing it better now. He's Look, managing it better, but I'm still worried that one one severe hit could see him out. That's uh, my fear. I think they got a they got a fear. Look, they got Drew Hutchison who can play in the halves yeah, as well. Agreed, but I don't think he's a he's a Luke Keery. But he's hoping he stays fit and we can see the best out of him because I'm really excited to see what the Roosters can do. And he's he's still the dogs beating them this year. Anyway. <coughs> Next game. Last game, no. Tigers and Dolphins. No, you've also be Souths. Oh, did Souths. I? Yeah, you haven't done Souths as well. But that's all right. Let's go to let's go to Tigers. Tigers and Titans up now. I got the Tigers by eight. Um, look, there's been a lot of uh, huff and puff and about the Tigers start of the year. Look, they got some. They've been reinvigorated. They got um, the old uh, Fox Tim Cheens. He's come in. He's brought um, Benji and Robbie Farah. Yeah, they'll bring their own twist to it. I still think the Tigers will start the season fast, but yeah. they will fizzle out as the season goes on. Um, I don't have them making the A. I actually have them finishing in 14th, but they will start improving. Um, <laughs> they got a lot of confidence going in them. At the Tigers moment. fans are going to hate this, but I reckon they're going to finish like ninth again. <laughs> no, look, if they finish ninth, I got them 14th. I think they'll start fast nah. and they'll fizzle out. I think. Look, I think here's the thing. I got them winning the first game, and I still think the Tigers and Gold Coast will both do a lot better in 2024. Um, look, I think they're going to do very well this year. I got, I got 14th Tigers, Gold Coast 15th. Look, I, I don't know. Like it, the thing is that the, the 17 teams are just so there's so much change. I don't know where I'm going to put everyone. But but here's the thing, right? They've got such a strong team yep. now, and they have good depth. Like they they haven't chosen so far Stafford Tower. They've got Brandon Wakem from the Doggies, uh, and they've got you know Junior Tupo, who they also haven't chosen. So I do think that, and they've still got Jason Bateman to come in. Um, so he's also going to... Jonathan Bate. Jason, no, not Jason, sorry. Um, Luke Bateman. No, not Luke. <laughs> we got his name wrong. John Bateman. From, John Bateman. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, British, yeah the British player. Yeah, the British player. Yeah, the British guy. Jason. Uh, Jeez, I'm, like, I was, I'm thinking about Ozark. Like, anyway. He's gone missing. <laughs> I, I think... Um, uh, they'll be a good, they'll be a good team. They'll do a lot better than last year. Yep. I, I, I don't know if I agree with having Tim Sheens as the coach. I think they could have had had him as like a director of football, like the dogs have Gould. But look, I don't think it's a bad thing either. Um, I, you know who I do feel sorry for though? Honestly, I, th- I feel sorry for Brett Kamali. I think that 
he did very good last year to front to the media and I put up with a lot of what happened. I think, uh, yeah, he took it well. I think he took good it on well. him. Um, I think he's coaching the women's side this year. Yeah, I think so he's coaching women's side. I, 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 do, I do hope I see Kamali coaching a first grade team one day. I think he has the smart. He's got some ideas. Uh, whether he's a, I think he's more of an assistant. He, you know, he, he was a fantastic attacking player. Yeah, I, I, I still think he's he's one of those really smart individuals that I think yeah, could can, make the change. Or could be just work with the halves, yeah. like Andrew Johns does. Titans, they've got Verils and uh, Kieran Foran and uh, Fafita his last year. I think they'll I think they'll re-sign Fafita. I think they'll get his partner to go up to Gold Coast because she's currently based on the South Coast. Oh, right. I think they'll be sold going to Canberra because everything shuts down in Canberra yeah, at I, 8 I, o'clock. Yeah. There's nothing there in Canberra, Canberra besides the Parliament House. Um, I mean... <sighs> You know, there's reports that the Broncos want to bring him home. I think I think that may happen. Um, well, look, yeah. Because they got, you know, Flegler and Farnworth have now signed with uh, the Dolphins. So Big signings by Wayne. Oh, there you go. He's coming signings. through now. Oh, definitely coming through. I think, you know, they, the Dolphins will be much better next year. But, um, yeah, look, I think the Titans will do well. Um, I think if they don't, they, I don't think they'll make the A, but I think they'll be up there um, probably 13th. But they'll do a lot better than they did last year. That's the way I look at it. They, they'll perform better. I I got him fifteenth uh, at this stage. I mean, I hope they prove me wrong. I don't, I don't mind seeing Gold Coast do well. Yeah, I know, but my I mean, problem, uh, you know, what my problem is with the Gold Coast is they've signed for it. He's really old. Sorry, I, I don't mean that he's old, but as in he's getting on in age now. And I do think that it's such a stopgap measure. And you know, you know, Tanner Boyd's in the seven. Uh, you know, who they're going to have in the in the six? I can't believe they let their half go to Canberra last year. Um, uh, Fogarty. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Honestly, last year I was perplexed that they let Fogarty yeah, I mean, go. Fogarty took him to the finals. They let him go. I found that mind-boggling. Yeah. And then, you know, he spent half the year out for injury and then came back and still took Canberra to the finals. And he did well. He did very, very well. So Yeah, I mean, it's very I didn't understand that. I, I still don't understand that. No, Ricky Shaw sure couldn't believe his eyes. He even got Fogarty. I, actually, at that point when when they, when when Fogarty, there was discussion about Fogarty leaving, I was actually hoping that's before we had... Um, but money in that, I thought, you know what, we we could probably get. We he was proven. Fogarty. Yeah, we should have gotten. He was like proven. Fogarty. You know, not he made the eight with a side that's that that wasn't flashed yeah, up. Yeah, absolutely. So he was proven. Yeah, yeah. And look, I think Tigers win this by about eight. I have the Tigers winning. I do. Yeah, I got the Tigers winning as I, well. I think home we, ground advantage. They'll start the season hot, um, full of confidence. But I still think they'll fizzle out as the year goes on. I they got a, they got a uh, they got some experienced heads in the forwards. Clemmer. Yeah, uh, look, Clem is a great addition. I think RP is captain. I think that's a great decision. Um, you know, I, I do I, I rate Dane Laurie. And to be honest, I think Adam Dwayhe is extremely underrated. Yeah, he I has think, a dig. Yeah. I think Dwayhe is excellent, honestly. I really do. And I think they they re-signed him for a year. I think they should have offered him a little bit more. They they probably do have plans, but look, I don't know. Um You know, move on to next yeah, Cowboys. Last and, team. Do you want to go Cowboys Raiders? We've got two games. There's Cowboys Raiders. If you want to go through them, that's yeah. lineups. Um, do you have your Cowboys Raiders line? No, I don't want Cowboys. Um, I'm, I'm going Cowboys here. I, got, Cowboys here by I the had a good field. think about it, but then I thought, you know what, last year everyone, and I mean everyone, thought Cowboys would come near the bottom of the ladder, yeah. especially after they lost at the Dogs at the start. That's right. And because Todd Payton was at the Warriors the year before, but Todd Payton is no nonsense. That's right. Straight in, he's he works off motivation. Incredible coach, incredible um, coach. And he was uh, going back about a decade. He won the under twenties with the Tigers, yeah, I think it right. was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, he doesn't show much. I can't emotion. believe the Warriors let him go. I still can't believe they let him go. No, I think he wanted to go back to Australia. Ma uh, I mean, it could be. I don't actually remember the the, the whole. He doesn't thing show there. much emotion. Um, he doesn't uh, play around with the media. He At gives them straight answers and moves on. He goes about his work quiet. And then. Great team. He's got good relationship with the players. They have a ripping team. I always think forwards make better coaches than backs. So you reckon? That's a, that's my personal opinion anyway. Yeah, you know what I think will be a good coach? I think Jason Riles will be a good coach. You think he's lining up for St. George, eh? Uh, you know what, man? <laughs> you know what? St. George, as soon as Hook you goes know, this year, and I think Hook will eventually be let go this year, they've got to get either Shane Flanagan or Des Hasler. I think they can't. I'll, I'll go Jason Riles. Because he brought <laughs> I think they need a steady Jason hand. Jason Riles they has been around. Hand, I man. think he worked a stint with English rugby as well. And we'll get into the Dragons in a minute. But um, I'll let you have your spiel right. in a minute. Cowboy, I've got Cowboys by 16. I have Cowboys by 13 plus minimum. I think drink water is amazing. And Valentine I don't think Holmes. Canberra will go badly here. It's just that start of the year. I think Canberra will get stronger as the season goes on. I think they're missing a few players. From the I've got Cowboys actually finishing second. 
this year. I know the Cowboys bench looks a bit skinny, mm. but I still think those guys will perform. If you look at their, their their bench, I think Cowboys have a good chance of coming uh, going to the grand final. I really I got them coming second. Do. I still, yeah, I think they will make the grand final. I actually got them here. Yeah. They're the goods to make the grand final this year. Um, I reckon- Cam- Canberra's always competitive, but just this game, I think it's up in North Queensland. Yeah, it'll probably be hot and humid. I got Cowboys by sixteenth. What about for the season? I by six. I got Cowboys second for the year. Raiders. Not- Eighth. I still got to make in the eighth. Nah, no way. I think because there's too they, many good teams for the Raiders to make it. They they lost Hodgson. They recruited Levi. I don't think Levi's that great. They're I just miss, think uh, they're missing Xavier Savage they for fly, the first eight rounds. Yeah, look, they fly under the radar there at Canberra. Look uh, again. Yeah, look, if they miss out on the eight, I won't be surprised. I just thought I'll just back uh, Sticky and his team. They came eighth last year. It came down, I think, between them, St George and Brisbane. Yeah, and but I mean, it, but but if you look at the collapse that Manly had after the. Pride jersey debacle and then the collapse that the Broncos had. I feel that Raiders got lucky to make the eight. Honestly, I do. Even though, look, they, they played good towards the end of the year. I don't think they're a top eight team. A lot, a lot of those players, I think half their teams played in the grand final before as well. Yeah, but I just don't see them making the eight. I mean, they're a good team. I don't see them making the eight, but I, I'm happy to be proven wrong. Look, uh, this is how I got them at the start of the year. So we, we yeah, can reevaluate uh, about uh, two or three months in. Yeah, I agree. Right, this is agreed. just how it is for now. I just. Not um, much going off. And the last game? We got Sharks and Rabbitohs. So it's the lineups there for well, Um I This for me is the match of the I round. I think this is the match of the round. Two mouth watering yeah. sides. The Excellent. only uh, downer to this game is Nico Hines. He's just he could have played. He's just been rested for precautionary reasons. I think, it's, I think it's a good move. Yeah, look, um, uh, I think I, I think they obviously he, Braden Trindle's no, no I, s- I still Nico think Hines. it's gonna be a very yeah, close I think it's game. game. Uh, I mean Cronulla's got some <coughs> Brilliant plays. Uh, Teague Wilton, what a game. What a what a big try. improver. His preseason challenge big was improver. excellent, Teague Wilton. Um now you got Souths. I think Souths will come fourth this year. I yeah, got, I think, I got Cronulla fifth. I just South, think injuries might play. I have play Souths the part. sixth. I yep. think that the, if because uh, my only my only problem is I think that um Latrell Mitchell might get injured. I'm hoping he doesn't, but if he does, we could see them lose a bit of momentum. Um I also look, I'm not a fan of Cody Walker. Um, I think he's fantastic. Oh, look, I, I know, know he – look, I know Cody Walker seems to be a hothead on the no, field. No, 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 hang on a second. I just want to make a disclaimer. I, I don't know the bloke personally. I just don't think – I think he's fantastic. I just don't think he can play without Latrell. No, because if you remember if you remember 2021, um, Latrell got suspended for that, that hit on um, Joey Manu. Yeah, I remember that. Um, just the way – they attack the left side, you know. Yeah, look, I mean, that's your personal opinion. Fair enough. Uh, I just thought, look, and you know, four or five eighth, he does create a lot of tries, and he does score a lot of tries, and he pops up at the right place at the right time. He kind of like reminds you of Terry Lamb, if you want to go back, hey, go back. Hey, do not besmirch. Do not besmirch. Terry Lamb was a fantastic the name player of Terry Lamb. Fantastic with su- with any player. There's no. no one that's going to be Terry Lamb. But uh, Cody Walker's more talented than Terry. Terry's Calm. How how dare you? Very more. Bro, talented. bro, bro. Please, I want you to take that back. Hey, Terry Lamb's a take brilliant player. Take it back. Terry Lamb. Terry Lamb is one of the best sixes that ever played. Oh, he's a fantastic six. Yeah, he was so brilliant. Calm down, and yeah. he was. As I said, no, 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 no. no. At Take the it right back. place, Take it back, at the right time, <laughs> Cody Walker is there like Terry Lamb, I said. I, I disagree. I disagree. But and anyway, he made things happen. I think, I think the Sharks will be in the top four. I do think the Sharks will be in the top four. I have the Rabbitohs at six. This game, just because Nico Hines is in there. It's going to be a close game, I reckon. It'll be a close game. I reckon Rabbitohs by six. I like Rabbitohs by four. Yeah, I, I think Rabbitohs win. Uh, just because Nico Hines isn't there. But even if they do lose, I don't think Sharks fans should be too, too disheartened. Um, yeah, look, uh, Fitzy uh, down there, he's recruited really well. Incredible. The clubs Incredible. gave him a good first uh, two years, I reckon. Yeah. I and, mean, and I think, he's got to I try think, and maintain it. And one of the things I like about Fitzy is actually Seraldo, um, he was having on the James Graham podcast, he was saying that um, Craig Fitzgibbon was someone that he's actually turned to quite a bit um, just to sort of as a, almost as a mentor. Um, which I think is is incredible, um, and and I'm sort of thinking that Seraldo wants to try and model sort of how he approaches this year based on what the Sharks did and the Cowboys did last year, and and I think that Seraldo can do it. That's why I think that the Bulldogs will surprise people. But I think Craig Fitzgibbon is is going to be a great career coach. I think uh, yeah, that's I tell you. Look, I think Sharks will go well for a number of oh, years. Absolutely, I think so. um, as long as they just keep the core of the players there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Souths, Jason Demetriou, great coach. Oh yeah, yeah. Coach oh, as well. Lovely, lovely guy. 
Thanks, Great coach. coach. Uh, did well in the English Super League when he was a player. I'll tell you a funny story about Jason Dimitri. Uh, I think he, the first side ever coach was my brother's under-15 side at Hurstville United. I think they won one game all year. Jason left halfway through the year to take up a professional contract in England. Wow. So, you know, I think Jason <laughs> will tell you it's harder coaching teenagers than first graders. Oh, it's harder doing everything. I remember Brian everything. Smith saying the same thing. Yeah. It's harder to coach. He was another great coach, man. Brian yeah, Brian Smith was no nonsense. Oh, you man. Know. He, was he, he wasn't those guys. He Even was... his brother Tony did well in the UK. Yeah. Look, Brian Smith was, I mean, he really. What, was it Tony's brother? Yeah, Tony. Yeah, Tony's Tony brother. Smith was, yeah. yeah, that's right. He's got his son now coaching, I think. Keegan, I think it is. Where's he coaching? In England. Keegan oh. Smith, I think his son. Oh, so. interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think so. Think. Brian Smith, look at the sides he took to grand finals. Like I know Parramatta's 2001 side was unbelievable, but he built that side. Yeah, yeah. And, and they were great, but not crash hot. He yeah, had to yeah. bring those plays in. You look at St. George 92, 93. Yeah. <laughs> They're probably worth half the Brisbane side if that. <laughs> All right, so let's 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 talk um top your overall 17. Wait, before we get there, yeah. there's one team missing. Who's that? The team that's got the bye. The uh. team that's been in the news. I thought you would since forget. The team that's been in the news <laughs> since the barbecue from two years ago. Yeah. And somehow you forgot them. Look, I'll be honest with you. My wife is a Dragons supporter. So I don't have a soft spot for the Dragons. I dislike the Dragons, but I usually watch every single Dragons game. So I know a bit about the Dragons. You're a Dragons supporter. Um, boo, once again. Um, I hope they get the, the, the wooden spoon. He's hoping. I've been making the hot. But. Look, I'll say one thing. Um. A lot of fans for the last five Hook years. won't make it to the end of the season. Look, a lot of fans for the last five years, especially Canterbury fans, have been tipping St. George to come to spoon. Instead, Canterbury's been getting spoons. No, have, what? We've only gotten one spoon. You've come last almost a few times before that. Almost. Point. One time was on for and against. Brisbane coughed up. That's right. Be, be, last year, you were going to come last till Potter came and, and did a did a saviour. That's was right. Yeah, did yeah. a saviour mission. Um. I don't think St. George. On, you guys, no, I don't think St. George. You guys won the 2010 Grand Final when literally no other team competed. You you won it, averaging 16 points a game. Let's not get into it, right? That, I dislike the Dragons. We just accept that. That defense was a red and white brick wall. Nah, it was it was great, and it, it was a red and white brick wall. Once they got in front, I knew job. they weren't going to nah, be chased down. Wonderful job. Look, St. George won't come last. I've got them coming 11th. If no Talatau, way. If Talatau Amon comes back You're early. You're dreaming, brother. They could, and Talatau Amon was set for a big season. Brother, they could get the Melbourne 4 back from 2009 to play for your team, and you guys will still come last. I'll win the Premiership. Nah. Really slow. Hook won't make English. it. I'm telling you, Hook won't make Cam it to the end Smith. of the year. Keep Hook will make it to the end of the year. I uh, Look, I, I've never had an issue Hook coaching the club. I, I, I just don't it's think... It's not an easy job being a coach. No, look, it's I think not, you need a strong head and Hook with all the criticism. With all due respect, all, people don't want to play under Hook. With all the media coverage, he's kept a cool head and, you know, you know, he hasn't cracked under pressure. It's a, it's a tough role. It's look, tough. it's a very tough role. It's probably role. the hardest job in the but, game but you, coaching. You know how we were talking about momentum? <laughs> there's the no momentum of, at the yeah, moment. There's we no momentum that. and the problem is... And this is why I find a lot of clubs get rid of their coach. It's the first step to try and rebuild momentum, get a new coach, you know, get a new board, buy some players. The problem is he's not really bought any players. He's bought what Zane Musgrave from the from the Tigers. Well, Who else did he buy? Um, Jacob Little from the think, Tigers. Think about it. Since Wayne Bennett and maybe even – he's probably the only coach in the last four decades of that club. Does anything? anyone Does anyone even want to play for – they're not a club that attracts players. But they should be. They're not. The Dragons are one of the largest and most they passionate haven't, support They bases. haven't attracted a club, a decent player to that club or big name really besides that Wayne Bennett era for Why? The, the greater part of four decades. Why? This, what's attractive about them? Well, that's what they've got is, to build. Is the culture attractive about them? I, okay, let me ask you this. What was attractive about the Bulldogs three years ago? Nothing. Well, That's why we couldn't get players. You know what? The that's Bulldogs, why we played that. That's I'll, why we played I'll listen. say one thing. The way the clubs run, if you go back to the football club and the leagues club, those guys involve. They care about the club. They're very shrewd operators. Yeah, they I know are. they have their dramas. I mean, you got I think let's you got John into, Curry on the board. Let's not get into the board. I think that's a whole different No, I think they're great. Now they're actually I actually no, no, even even in passes, you had Arthur and his brother George Curry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I thought, you know, and a few of the other old timers, I thought they were great. They did great for a long time. I'm, I'm with you. And the history goes back to, to Bullfrog as obviously, well. Obviously, the great Bullfrog. But but here's what I'm saying, They're right? the family club. Yeah, but here's what I'm Look saying, the culture. Right? The Dragons have just as rich a history in the NRL I'll as anyone you, else. I'll tell you one thing. Um, uh, 
Why am I arguing for the Dragons? I'm not no arguing. I'm going to say why. Second. I'm going to say why. Um, if you probably don't remember, you won't know this player, Pat Jarvis. No. Anyway, he's. Did what, he play for the Dragons? Yeah, he played yeah, for. But he also played for Canterbury. <laughs> so I remember speaking to. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember okay, speaking yeah, yeah. to his now ex-wife um, Anne. She's telling me at St George it was going back to the eighties. Her son's my age. We play a bit of footy together. Yeah, he's now a big fashion designer. Okay, and all her kids are very successful. He's got, she's got her other son. Jackson. Anyway, anyway, get to the anyway, point. She was telling me at St George it was rock up game day. Uh, watch the guys play. Grab this stuff. Go home at Canterbury. When when Pat played, played there, I think one or two years. She was telling me. Um. The ladies, would, all the wives would sit in the grandstand. They had a childcare pen for all the <laughs> wow, kids. Wow, that's crazy. And on top of that, they would sit there getting finger foods and like glasses of champagne, for example. That's what she was telling me. She, we Canterbury don't, was we a don't love alcohol in this, uh, I know we don't. I'm just saying. I'm just saying how, and, but they looked after the kids. Oh, and, and look, I'm just saying how Canterbury goes above and beyond. I'm with you. I'm with you. For their club. Whereas St. George, I know they're making moves to build. I saw it last year. They got a few of the. Um, uh, okay, they got a, uh, the players from the men's and the women's side involved, and former players involved on the corporate side of things yeah. and the business development side of things. I think I saw Kezi Apps, um, uh, Tarek Sims, on. You know, I wish he was still at the club. Yeah, he'd be great for the club. I, I have no idea why they got rid of him. I still don't understand that. Uh, move. They got Jamie Soward. I think he's very fan, he's fantastic. He's I involved. Jamie Soward. I'll never get over that absolute milking of two thousand and nine when we lost that game and cost us the the. the hey, I was at a wedding. I will never ever get over that. And then when when I read out the result, <laughs> I will I not got, get got, over that. I got no. put off stage. Yeah, and you should have. Well done to whoever booted him off stage. Love anyway, you, Soward. Anyway, nah, get out of here. Anyway, um, nah, <laughs> big big ups. Um, so here's the thing, right? And and this is what I like about Soraldo when we go back to the Bulldogs is when Viliami Kikau's pa father passed, the, you know, Soraldo was on the next flight to go be there. Very respectful. And because and, and, and Soraldo wasn't even trying to make a media thing out of it. The photos that were taken weren't even taken. Goes about him. his work quietly. But he, he was there to support Viliami. He wasn't there. Just to represent, as in to, to get media for the club. He doesn't he want to. He's, he's not there for clout. So that's he's good. Not, and even Viliami said that we were, we were so appreciative that the club let Seraldo go. They paid for everything. Didn't have a problem with it. And for me, like, sure, it may still have had, there may still have been an intention for PR, but well, for me, that well goes a wrong club. way. I just want to see one thing from Canterbury. Yeah. More Lebanese players in their team. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I think it also comes down to the players being. Goes back to Hazamel yeah. Masri. Look, but if you look at last year... I think year, before that you had Joe Thomas. <coughs> last year they held the annual Bulldogs uh, iftar. Yeah. Right, the iftar. I think that was one of the best things the Canterbury Club could have done. They have so many Muslim supporters, and I think as a Muslim supporter, that for me, the club grew in my eyes so much. I know that they're there. You know, it's it's a it's a club thing. It's obviously good PR for them. The, but They're a very multicultural I, club. They I got loved a, it. They got a I, big... I um, excellent, man. They it got was... A, they got a big oh, Polynesian following as man. well. They got a big Greek following. A lot of the Greek community follows. And, and, and the, more they can, the more they can um, uh, 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 contribute to their communities and do things for the community. And they're the, and they're the beating oh, heart. I love it. And they're the beating heart of the Lebanese community. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think it's excellent. You know, and well done. I think well done to the Bulldogs. Like, there's just so many positives. I, I mean, that's the thing, right? You look at 18 months ago to today, there are just so many positive. I'm so excited. We're going to make that. I think it. I think the fans just need to get over one thing. If you see American fans, whether the team's winning, winning, losing, or drawing, yeah. they're there attending. They got their memberships. Fans need to get oh. over only supporting their Hang club on a second. when they're only winning. No, and no, I don't no. refer to just the Canterbury. No, no, but, but let me let me let me let me counteract that you with that. I think we were in the top three most supported clubs over the last three years. Yeah, yeah, even though I want to see it reflected, I'm just saying. I'm not saying only Canterbury, but attendance is every game should be a sellout or a near sellout. Well, I mean, you can't I don't sell, like you're not saying sell eighty thousand seats. Out. I'm not referring to. Okay, let's just you know, let's just Allianz or whatever. Let's just say now. twenty to twenty five thousand. We are averaging twenty one thousand. That's pretty good. I mean, honestly, I just don't want to say, you know, when they're winning, they're getting, for example, 25,000. And when they're on losing, they're only getting eight or 9,000. It's an ugly look, look on the, the game. There are, no, there are no better fans in the, the game than the than the Bulldogs fans. I'm going to put it out there. I'm, I'm not referring to only Canterbury. I'm referring to oh, the whole. Across. Yeah. Melbourne fans, they attend because they're a one city team. Brisbane, one city team. Yeah, but they, they're crazy about the rugby league. We we've got you know we've you'll got... start seeing look Melbourne will keep it, but you with Brisbane you'll start seeing attendances dwindle. Yeah, if they because now there's a second side, and if they don't sustain the success, oh, they will. And this is going to drive rugby do. league even more in Brisbane. Well. And me I too. Hope so. All right, final say. Well, how do you think that who's going to win the competition, and uh, uh, who do you think is going to be uh, the loser? Who's going to be there with them? 
I'm going to go Penrith, mm -hmm. North Queensland Cowboys grand final. Mm -hmm. I still think Penrith's got the goods to go three peak. Yep. I know uh, they're losing players. Yeah. I know everyone expects them to go down the ladder. I don't. I still think, uh, when I mean down the ladder, maybe like second or third or fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's crazy, but I know Cleary's been the dominant half for the last few years. Yeah. But he's still got room for improvement. He has improvement. a lot of room to improve. How old is he? 25 or something? 24. 20, he's still got a lot so of So is Jerome Loy. I think and Luai's five. got a lot of improvement in him. Sonny Luke is they 19. All they're all very young. Like, you know, they're a very young team. They with, all got yeah. improvement, even Crichton. Oh, absolutely. It's crazy, yeah. And don't forget, yeah, Brian Tuttle. And they got... Oh, Taylor my, May's out for the year, though. That's all right. He's replaceable, but we have just as a good player. My uh, personal favourite in that team is Isaac Targo. Ah, just gives Tango, you yeah. non-stop for 80 minutes, underrated. Actually, he goes about his work quietly. I like, I like I, him. I like the whole team. Let me tell you, I think that also it'll be <coughs> either a, a, a Penrith Cowboys or a Penrith Roosters grand final. Don't right? discount in Souths. I think Souths won't make the grand final. They'll, they'll go, go, okay. They'll go close, but they'll, they'll make the grand close. final. All right. right? Um, Penrith to do the three-peat. I think Penrith will do the three-peat. Um, here's the thing, though. I... My favorite player in that Penrith team and his confidence and arrogance is Jerome Luai. If if Jerome Luai ever watches this podcast or ever hears this message. I'd love to have him in my team. I wouldn't want to play against him though. <laughs> I think I love the aggression, bro. Keep it up and give us more of it. Bro, when you play for the Blues, I want you to stand over every single Queensland player. Bro, be as arrogant, as confident as and as annoying as you can be. They've been doing it for decades. We, we need more of it. Bring it, bro. Bring it. I love it. I love the Panachino. I love the Asian, bro. Yeah, Queensland, love is, the a, energy, Queensland is actually a nice place of people. We just pick on them too much. Now, get out of my... Are you a Queensland supporter? I'm not. I had to spend a few months up there last ah, year. And I thought, jeez, these people How are, dare you? They're very plastic, We're a Queensland. blues podcast. I'm always New South Wales. We're a blues podcast. We say nothing good about Queensland. I just think we're bullies. We say nothing good about <laughs> us bullies. We're the bullies. Bro, this guy. We're just losing to the underdog Thank all the time. God, two-headed We just keep losing get to the, uh, to um, the uh, cane toads. So, <laughs> I think I've ex expelled a lot of energy. Um, Who's Penrith your wooden spoon? I know you said St. George. I honestly, I honestly feel like it will be either St. George or the Knights. I got, I got Manly. I, I don't think Manly. I'm going to throw it out of left field, Manly. Um, everyone thinks they're going to go great because of their preseason. I think, I think they're just well. going to, they've got nah. ahead of themselves. DC is, is aging. He's aging, but he's still excellent. I think it's, I think Brian, Seabold's still, still fresh in after the nah. last debacle. Uh, I still, I, I'm just gonna say Manly last. I dislike Manly, but I think I, I hate you, Manly. Well. You don't, you don't like me either. <laughs> I think Manly will do very well. And with that, I think we've come to the end of the podcast. Um, I want to thank you if you've made it this far. Um, you're clearly crazy about rugby league, and you clearly have a lot of time on your hands, and that's what we love to see. Um, it'll be great if you guys can subscribe. We'll be releasing one podcast a week. We will, we will have uh, players and some media scribes on the show throughout the year. We won't reveal yet. Big um, plans, massive is the, plans. This is the first show of the season, so I know it went on for a bit long, but we will trim it down as the season goes on. I mean, unless he wants to give, give me stupid opinions about the Dragons, then we probably won't. But look. The oh, look, uh, <laughs> you'll, have the, uh, you'll have the Daily Telegraph journals <laughs> of uh, Phil Rothfield and Paul Kent. They can give those opinions. No, no, no. Um, but look, we will have, um, you know, People from Junior Rugby League coming on. We'll have ex-players. We'll have current players. We're going to have try and have some coaches. Um, we've got a big year planned. Um, we're here to talk Rugby League. We're here to talk Bulldogs. And we're here to just enjoy the season together. Um, we hope that you guys enjoy the season, but we also hope you enjoy this podcast. If you did, please subscribe. If you didn't, subscribe. And then leave a comment as to why you didn't like it. If you liked it, thumbs up. Awesome. Um, but please follow us. Uh, we will have all the links to our social media uh, below. Thank you so much if you sat this far. Um, if you find my voice annoying, awesome. Come back so I can annoy you some more next week. If you like my voice, awesome. Thank you. Um, I want to thank Divo, my co-host, for joining today. Um, it's been it's been absolute ball um, sitting here for the last, I don't know, one and a half hours. I, I can't wait till we also get some of the fans on the podcast as oh well. Oh, my God. We've got big plans. We will be bringing some of the fans on as well. To go so along with said, the footy players and media scribes. Absolutely. And we will be putting questions out there. Um, there will be a link to the Kennel Forum where you will have to be if you want to be on the podcast. And if you want your questions answered, you will have to be on the Kennel Forum. So be sure to sign up. It is for everyone in rugby league, not just Bulldog supporters, but if you're a Bulldog supporter, that's a plus. Thank you so much for um, listening and we look forward to spending the season together and enjoying it. Have a great, have a great whatever time of day you're watching this. Thank you.